All right, thanks guys for joining us for our last episode of 2020. Uh, we have made it through a little bit more than 24 full episodes. So this makes uh, the official episode 24, um, which is going to be the last episode of the year. Um, on the 29th, we won't be having an episode because it's New Year's, it's after the holidays. Y'all ain't gonna be listening to us anyway. So uh, we decided to make this our last episode and um, to give thanks to all of our followers on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, we decided to um, come bearing gifts. So we are giving away a gift this week. Uh, we'll announce the winner sometime during the middle of the show. So you have to watch the show to get your name. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, let's see, church announcements this week. This is our last set of church announcements um, for 2020. 2020 has been a fucked up year. Just let's just throw that out there. It has been woo. That's it, the right longest there. century ever in one in eight months. This has been the longest century. Nine months now. Um, long, long. Like at the beginning long, of the year, long. there was there was the fires in Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, then Kobe Bryant passed away. Fires was this year? The end of 19 and on into 20. Into 20. Girl, I don't, it seemed like that was like 15 years ago. No, it was, yeah, within the last 12 months. Um, so Kobe died in January, which, in the, I mean, everyone was just devastated. I'm not even a basketball fan, and I was like Shocked. broken, broken because his daughter, you know, Gianna also passed away. Um, then in March, the official call of the pandemic, global pandemic, um, COVID-19, uh, then having to deal with the White House and current White House administration, not trying to navigate us through that and telling people they don't need it, they don't need masks, they don't need to take precautions, and it just got progressively worse. Mm -hmm. um, now we're over in the United States. There have been 12 days, recent days, of record number of COVID. Yes. Deaths. 12 days straight. Uh, we are over 300,000 people in the United States who have passed. So this is still... 320,000. 320,000. It's still an ongoing thing here in the States. Um, other countries have gotten a hold on it. But the current Cheeto has really poison people's minds against science and common sense and i mean to the point where people get violent about wearing a mask and taking precautions uh then in um chadwick bozeman died y'all i still ain't good mm -hmm. i still ain't good with with this one uh yeah still not i did jack did i call you and tell you yeah, it was a hard blow. Yeah, I was on. I was at the beach in California, and I was looking at Twitter, I think. And I was like walking along the shoreline. There's like in Corona Del Mar, there's, there's like a seawall. Basically, I was walking on the seawall, and I saw it, and I was like, "What? Wait, wait, what?" So I go to CNN, and it's on there. The entire world was shocked because no one really knew he was sick. And, no. Um dying and playing our superhero a true superhero like our hero and that hurt um and then on top of that i think at this point everybody in the in the united states is somehow affected by a death either directly or indirectly with covid so you've yep. either had a friend a family member or a friend of a friend or someone that you know, either directly or by extension, has passed away from this disease, um, this virus. And then just the death, the death toll in, in general has been high. It, I mean, I know people die every day, I'm not stupid, but it seems, it seems like it's like, dang, every time I turn around, I don't watch the news. I avoid the news because I don't want to deal with that. Right. But it's like it's way the like the death rate is way higher than I ever remember. 
So it's like, dang, every time you listen, you know, you watch TV, I don't, I internet, really dying, um, accurately. But I, I think I heard someone say that the death toll is higher than a war. I don't know which war they were talking about. Um, no, it's higher than war. Any war. Any war. Wow. In eight months. Wow. In eight months. And then just the and then the personal losses, mm-hmm. you know, people dying and not being able to grieve properly. Oh, that's you know, we can't yeah. we can't hug, you have we to can't. give last rites in your last moments through FaceTime. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't think anybody ever anticipated using FaceTime to watch your relative draw their last breath or to say goodbye or to not be able to communicate with your elders only through a window. And as we know, babies and the elderly crave touch. And when they don't have touch in direct contact, they decline. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the elderly in homes, uh, you know, and um, convalescent and homes and, you know, of that nature where they're not in their home, they, they're not getting any contact with anyone. And then those who are actually shut into their homes, they can only see their grandkids and their kids through, through a window or a door just for their safety. Right. It's, it's an unnatural way to live. Um, and, Very you know, it's taking a toll on us and we are able-bodied adults and we can actually go outside if we need to and get in our car and go sit outside if we need to. And it's still taking a toll um you know on us to you know th- this virus i i, I don't I, I keep saying that i want to say disease but it's actually a virus so um again uh this year has been crazy um have there been any real victories this year <laughs> like any besides i mean we're still here we're still on this side of the veil which is a victory in and of itself mm-hmm. but Has there been anything to celebrate? Like as a whole, as a collective unit, has there been anything to celebrate? I mean, other than the election? Yeah. Can we celebrate the election? Because apparently it's not over. (laughs) I mean, Biden has been declared the winner. He has won. He has been the the 46th president 78 times. And how many times has, has Trump lost? I think we're on like his 85th loss. At this yeah. Point. He's lost Georgia four times, I think. Yes. <laughs> and every time he loses, the margin of his loss gets higher. It gets higher. Dude, well, I think I'm going to lose. I want to lose one time. Let me save face. You know, let me bow out gracefully. Nobody likes to lose. But I'm not going to you keep challenging it and you're losing every time you challenge it. So you're making it worse for yourself. Like for a person who doesn't like loss, he has lost like 90,000 times. Yes. Since November. And yeah. we still have some days left. So, I mean, we can't just count it all joy yet. We still have. Yeah. Like more. He's like Nero watching Rome, the city of Rome burn. You know what I mean? Like he's just really sitting there, you know, in a watching at the palace watching it burn. Um, he's completely checked out. Like, there was recently a couple weeks ago, within the last few weeks, where um, he was giving like a, 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 a some sort of like high honor medal to someone, like the highest civilian honor or something to someone, and he walked out during the ceremony, just walked out. Like this man is receiving this medal, not like a medal. Of, it wasn't the medal of honor; it was some medal of freedom or something like that. And they're in the Oval Office. And while they're in the Oval Office, Trump just and walked uh, out. You know, he classless. So Completely classless clown. Yeah. Um, it's um just crazy. So yeah. this is what we're doing in, in uh 2020. Now, um, as far as the church announcement goes, well, of course, we always want to pray for the sick and shut in. Uh, even pray for those brothers in prison. Please pray for them because they got more going on than they can't do nothing. 
They sure can. Um, we have suspended the prison ministries. Um, of Rona. Because where yeah. you going to go? Yeah. So we've suspended the prison ministries for our safety. Uh, we ain't going. Okay. I know we got no prison ministries. It's new to me. We ain't going. Uh, <laughs> we not going. Um, we send our prayers, our thoughts and prayers, but we ain't coming. Um, <laughs> we ain't coming. Uh, so those are it. Um, Prison bitch. Those are announcements as follows. Govern yourselves accordingly or please obey your ushers. All right. So oh, we have done 24 episodes, like 24 different subjects at least, right? Um, ranging from you know, sibling murderers, uh, the, those are Carr brothers and the Brileys and uh, mothers who kill, which was Michelle Blair, um, which is probably one of my favorite stories. Uh, it, also, it is one of my favorite stories. <laughs> we also did Tamala Horsford, which was one of the very first ones that we did was Tamala Horsford. She mm -hmm. was a 40 year old woman in 2018 when she went to an adult slumber party. And during that slumber party, she well, she went because her sons and the six or seven other ladies, all of their sons played on the football field. She was the only black woman there. She was the only one who died. Um, she had multiple injuries. She had a broken neck. She had uh, bruises on her heart. Uh, she was really jacked up. And they said she fell from a second story balcony. Um, I, it's actually probably one of the most popular stories in general yeah. to everybody. I hear that story. It is a story that just bothers everybody because they're like it, like it's it's like nobody talks about this. Ain't nobody tried to recently, uh, as recent as November of this year, People magazine did a story on like a update story on Tamala Horsford. Basically, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation is looking into this as foul play, not necessarily murder. But based on her injuries, and she had what the coroner, what the medical examiner is thinking of as uh, defensive wounds on her mm -hmm. wrist, they are reopening this case as a possible foul play. Um, and then there's just all these other things. There was a security camera in the house that apparently wasn't working that particular night. Um, there was a male in the house. There were supposed to be just women, but the boyfriend of, of the homeowner was there. He also worked for... Um, Forsyth County, and he hacked into the sheriff's department's records and looked at Tamla's personal information, spread that around. Um, okay, he was fired, but um, it's really, really suspicious. So, uh, as an update on that Tamla horse case from 2018, they are looking at this as foul play. So, they did reopen the case. Um, because her injuries are just not matching up with a second story fall. Um, she had drugs in her system that she had not taken before. Um, she was three times the legal limit of alcohol. She had three times the legal limit of alcohol in her system. She wasn't a heavy drinker like that. Um, and I, I don't know about y'all. Like y'all have, both of you guys have nothing but sisters, right? I have nothing but brothers. Okay. I have a brother three sisters i have been pushed off of a second floor not just fell off i have been pushed okay uh, mm -hmm. i have been ran over by a motorcycle from my brother was on the motorcycle ran me over um i've been wait. pushed down the hill like jack and jill y'all and here yeah here i am no broken neck no contusions to my heart i'm, I'm quite sure i'm all jumbled up inside so you know once <laughs> It's just not right. Um, well, I've definitely jumped off a two story out of two story window easily. What would you do? Easily, we what did that easily. What would you we do? Jumping out of a two story window. <laughs> Me and my sisters was acting like we was fire right. The house was on fire. We had to right. say, "Okay, clean that up." We were. We were bad. <laughs> we were very busy and very bad. I just never had no desire to cause harm to myself. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> this country, I mean, you have like country. I'm very country. Brandy's sisters so, are like really girly, though. So they're all very feminine and very 
just so like they they brandy's always been just very feminine and i've always been mystified i think we met we're cousins but we met in the seventh grade and she was just so like together the whole time like i'm all rough and tumble and shit you know brandy was just so like well in seventh grade i probably was about 40 yeah seventh grade yeah yeah i um you know, I have my Buick and I have my good government job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I can't see, I can't imagine Brandy like doing anything that that had anything to do with dirt. Um, um, well, that no, we did. play with dirt. I'm just not doing anything that's harmful to myself. Like I remember in college, girls would jump out after curfew, jump out the second story window. And I remember I left campus after curfew and I was like I'm just gonna walk through the front door like I'm not jumping out of windows like I'm gonna just walk out the front door <laughs> yeah. I did well, we jumped yeah. we jumped out of trees I fell out of a tree yeah jumped out of trees fell out of trees just I bad. fell out of a magnolia tree like dead face chest stomach everything um I mean, I got the wind knocked out of me, but... Yeah, get on up, keep pushing. Yeah, I had to, because you was going to get a whip because I shouldn't have been in the tree. <laughs> um, <laughs> saying all this to say that her, you know, Tamala Horser's um, injuries are not matching up to what they say happened. So they're reopening that case, so there's an update on that. Um, what other stories? Jackie, what's one of the stories that really... Um, of the ones that we did, um, what's one of the stories that just really either spooked you or spoke to you or whatever? Ooh, um, definitely uh, Ray Dandridge and uh, Ricky. I can't think of his last name right now. It was just there. Um, the brothers that just went on the spree of killing just just killed that family for like literally for nothing because they didn't have anything. That's probably one of the stories that stand out to me the most. I just oh, thought yeah. their behavior was just. Yeah, they killed the, um, the 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 little girl. Like she, oh my god, the the, the mom, the dad, the, the yeah, kid, and the little girl was supposed baby. to spend the night at her friend's house, and the friend came in the house, and then yes. the the little girl's friend came in the house, and then she left. Like Ricky and Ray Dandridge were in the house when the two little girls are in there, and then the little neighbor little girl leaves, and then they. Then they tie up the homeowner's daughter and kill her. She, I think she was like nine. Yeah, took that baby like, down, down to the basement and killed her. And then, then didn't really get away with anything. They didn't take mu any valuables, hardly anything. And it was just like, what, what, why? Like, why? You, you got to be pretty cold hard to kill a kid. You, you right. got to have some problems. Kill that child. was, I want to say, episode, that was in August. Mm -hmm. Um, so that had to be episode eight, I think. It was one of the early stories for sure. Yeah, I think that was episode eight. So it was Ricky Gray and Ray Danders, and that was an uncle yeah. and nephew combo right there. They mm -hmm. also killed um they also killed one of them's one of their wives. Um, um I think it was because Ricky is the uh, Ray is the one who had got um who got the death penalty? Yeah. Okay. Um, did Ray Dangerous get the death penalty? Was it Ricky that got the death penalty? I think it was Ray. Oh, I think it was Ray. So Ashley uh, Baskerville, her mother and her stepfather were killed by the by the duo. Um, she actually set up her mom and dad to be robbed, and then they end up killing her, and yeah. she was the wife of one of them. I don't remember which who was that. She, no, she was the girlfriend of one of them, Treva Gray. Ricky's oh, was girl. Ricky's wife. They killed her, so they killed Ricky's wife, and then uh, Ashley Baskerville was a girl. They, they actually killed Ricky's wife before the before, major murder. before all of this started. Before, before all that started, they yeah. killed her like early, and they like buried her in the woods or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they killed her almost like six or eight months before their murder spree. 
uh, in November of 2005. And then January of um, January of 06, that's when they, they started. That's when they mm-hmm. first killed someone after the, after Treba. Um, so yeah, so their murder spree only lasted seven days. So in seven days, they killed like nine people. Um, yes, yeah, so that was that was one hell of a Because I'm like, man, you know, they literally told the mom, open the door, let the daughter come in. And as a mother, you have to sit there and be strong enough and be like, okay, hopeful that they're going to let my children go. Yeah. So because she's hopeful and she doesn't want to cause a scene, which can draw more attention, even though I personally would have said something. But she was just like, okay, I understand her thinking. It was like, okay, let me just protect my children. Let me just do what they tell me to do. And to, to sit there and watch her open the door, let her child in, and then let her bring her child down there. And if y'all to kill my child in front of me, because I believe they killed the children so that the parents could see first. Right. So I'm like, you, you got to be sick. You're like, you yeah, really, really that causes fear. Like, if you kill my children, then you cause a, a ridiculous amount of fear. And they really got off on that fear that they were causing these people. Yeah. Um, so, and if you listen to, there's an interview with uh, Ricky Gray, um, the survivor, one who, well, the one who didn't get the death penalty. And he talks about, no, it was with Ray Dandridge. We're getting us all confused. Ray Dandridge, before he got the death penalty, before he was put to death, he's interviewed. And it is so eerie. Like, you just hear it. You can't see him, but you can hear his voice. And he has zero emotion. It is like a black hole of, yeah. So that that interview is actually on YouTube. What does that be? A black hole to do stuff like that. Like you yeah. have to be not in your right mind because who would do that in their right, right mind? So and they did have, and he did have child, you know, abuse and trauma. But you know, once you, did you you still know right from wrong, but you you still did go through some trauma. He did go through some trauma, some serious. The tales trauma. of the child abuse, I I'm skeptical. Did you say Brandy? Go ahead, I said people around every day, all day with with trauma, and you don't be chopping down folks' family. Right. Right. And. The trauma, the worst trauma was supposedly allegedly happened to Ricky Gray that he was uh, addicted to PCP by the time he was 11 and he was sexually abused and his father was an alcoholic. There are parts of that story of his childhood and being addicted to alcohol and drugs that early that just don't ring true to me because he was also in a military academy at the same time. Um, yeah. So it's just something about his his childhood story that never rang true for me when we were reading this. Mm-hmm. And I just yeah, I just think that, that was like I, I don't doubt that his father was an yeah. alcoholic and that the the home life was a bit dysfunctional. But as far as the drug addiction, I uh, I never believed that one. Never believed that one. Um the next story, the ne- the very next week we did the Briley brothers. Um yep. And this was one of my favorite stories. And it's it's morbid. It's weird that I love this story, but I do. Um, and that's just because they were like the bad news bears of Richmond, Virginia. Mm-hmm. Um, just like uh, Ricky Gray and Ray Dandridge, they had no fear, no None. emotion. They picked their victims at random. They had no plan no uh, motive, no anything. So for while they were killing, the police could never really connect the crimes because they they had no connection whatsoever. Completely random. Completely random. random. They would really pick you if you were walking down the street. They would pick you, shoot you, uh, bludgeon you to death. Uh, one couple was burned with kerosene. Mm-hmm. They survived. Um, thank God. And it was three brothers. It was Linwood, James, Anthony, and Anthony. And then they um, recruited Duncan Meekins, who was 16 when they were committing the crimes with him. Um, yeah. So you know, the Riley brothers were, they were brutal. They even killed their friend, the friend's wife, pregnant wife, the five-year-old. They left the dog alive, though. And... They left the puppy alive because they knew that that puppy would be in the house to destroy evidence. 
and he because the puppy for what three what three days was walking through the house and tracking their blood all over the place um but yeah they killed their childhood friend for nothing he didn't do anything to them um like they just he was afraid of them just like the lady from um what were their names um the Harvey family from Ray Dandridge and Ricky Gray, which was also in Virginia. Mm -hmm. um, they, they went into their home. He kind of had to let them in because he was already, you know, the friend was already afraid of them and he let them in thinking that, okay, because I know them, they're not going to do anything to me, but they did. And um, yeah. yeah. They killed them See, quite brutally. That I remember is that they were so bad as kids that their mom just peaced out and rolled out. Like I'm, I'm yeah. I'm, I'm, when your mama, yeah, that's bad. Your mother says, "Come get your kids." As a matter of fact, I'm gonna leave. Fuck these kids. Is what she said, and she meant that. <laughs> she she is the one who coined the phrase. Fuck these Fuck kids. <laughs> so, so we can thank uh, Mrs. Briley for okay. coining the phrase "fuck them kids" because she really chunked deuces and was out. Out. And then they they even scared the father because he would lock himself at night. He would bolt himself, uh -huh. do you know, in his bedroom. And didn't we have Anthony? Anthony Doyle, our what, our first or second story? Anthony Doyle. <laughs> who killed the donut lady in, in, in uh, Rowlett, Texas, his father also locked himself in the room. So yeah. when you scare your daddy, your, your daddy, daddy, your daddy, not your step daddy, not Mr. Charles, <laughs> your daddy to locking himself in his bedroom. Your ass is bad. Mm -hmm. I'm not locking your myself in nothing in my own house. See, Ain't, will not. I, I mean, you birthed the Rileys and you got two choices. You either got to kill them or you got to leave. Because who knows what they would have done to that woman, knowing that she hated them or was scared of them. Who knows what they would have done to her? Um, however, the father... I mean, that, 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 that's pure evil. <laughs> yeah. The father, Mr. Briley, stuck by his sons, of course. And even Mrs. Briley, even though she left... Once they were sentenced to prison, like she did interact with them. The two, the uh, Linwood and James were executed. Um, so all the way up to execution, she was supportive of them in whatever role she could be supportive of them, of them in at that point. So yeah, Briley's uh, was in the 70s and then, um, yeah. All right, Bran, what was one of your favorite stories this year? The one about the teenage the black teenager that was the serial killer I can't remember her name I should have I forgot I wrote it down but I forgot. <gasps> um was it the the black a girl yes this is like oh Earth. Clementine oh oh yeah 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 Clementine episode 19 oh, good one good choice yeah. episode 19 Clementine Barnabas um, actually, Brandy, you, you presented that story because you were talking to me about it. And I was like, we're going to do that story. Um, so Clementine Barnabit back in 1901 or 1911. Let me find it. It, it was, it was something early on. Oh, let's see. Here we are. Here we are. Here we are. She was episode 16. Um, on October, we recorded that episode October 14th. Um, mm -hmm. Clementine Barnabit, it was, uh, she was born in 1894 in Louisiana. And in 1911, she allegedly killed a whole damn family. Yeah, allegedly. <laughs> a couple families. Yeah. So she started that rampage and she killed a whole damn family. All together, it's supposed to be 35 people or more. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, that, they, that they know of. That they know of because she was a part of a cult, uh, a church called the um, Church of Sacrifice and it's Christ Sanctified Holy Church. 
Um, and when they church would sacrifice, that's exactly what they did. Um, they would the the victims would be killed and then laid out in a very um, ceremonial, sacrificial kind of thing. Um, she was only nineteen years old, seventeen. 17. You have to say 17 when it started. 17 when it started. And she was a practitioner, kind of like a high priestess in this church. Uh, she uh, testified against her father right, for committing some of these murders. But then the murders kept happening when he was in prison. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. exact same murders. Like So she, the even in 1911, the police were able to put together a profile of her of a killer and like they keep doing the same thing so they tried her father um they testified against their father and testified against her father yeah i'm saying she testified and said it was him testified against her father this whole dynamic of a black female serial killer in 1911 is crazy in the south in louisiana but louisiana was a whole different animal than just the, the american mm-hmm. south at that point um, she was actually tried and convicted um, in 1912 and sentenced to life in prison at Angola State Penitentiary. Um, in 1913, she attempted to escape, but she was caught. Then in 1923, it says that she was released. Some stories say she was released, and then some say that she escaped, and then there's nothing about, about her after that awesome. um, there's kind of like a myth of a, a, a story that in 1985 there was an old woman telling a story uh, <laughs> about Clementine and just so happened the woman telling the story was supposedly Clementine and that was in 1985 but between 1923 and 1985 there's zero information about this woman so she I think basically she, was off the map she tried to escape one time and she got caught yeah and yeah. then she escaped and then but apparently she didn't kill no more folks so she learned her lesson because right as far as we know, as far as we know but i mean for 60 some years you don't have any anything going on about clementine so you don't know what kind of unsolved murders there were that she could have been attributed to uh with um but it's just crazy that a black woman in 1911 was caught and convicted of murder. Not just any murder, not just like murdering a spouse, a murder of a child. We're talking murder of innocent people, an entire family. She killed the mama, the daddy, the sister, the brother, the dog, the cat, and the goldfish. Any and everybody. Anybody that was moving and breathing in the house got dead. White folks, too. She killed white people. And they didn't just kill her. They didn't just kill her. They actually tried her trial and she got put in prison which was so crazy um they did um while she was in prison if you guys hear barking in the background that is the beast named earl okay um that's that's just who he is okay he don't like being down there but he is that's just earl um but they while he they were in prison i think they gave her a lobotomy or they did some sort of a psychological testing or something was it a lobotomy Yeah, uh, yeah, they gave her a lobotomy in in, uh, in prison, um, which you know, of course, is going like through the nose with a, like a scraper thing, and then scraping a part of your frontal lobe. And the thing about lobotomy is they didn't know what they were trying to scrape; they were just in there. Yep, in their mets and around. Yeah, they were just in there, and then whatever they would pull down through your nasal cavity. Um, they used to do that a lot. Um, and the results were never right. Like, because first of all, you don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're looking for. So how can you, you have good results? Uh, Rosemary uh, Kennedy, they did that to her. Um, she was, you know, developmentally, no, I don't, intellectually challenged. And mm-hmm. they gave her a lobotomy and she was functional. She was completely functional. And they gave her a lobotomy, and then she was messed up after that. There was an actress, a white actress called Frances Farmer, and she probably had anxiety and depression. And they, she said, was her mother kept sending her to a mental institution, and she got a lobotomy. She's messed up forever. Um, don't ask me why I know that, but I do. 
Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I think. Okay, so if according to our YouTube channel, mm-hmm. the most popular story is the story of the Carr brothers in the Kansas massacre. However, there's a story that we did not put on YouTube, which was our two part episode of Michelle Blair. <laughs> That would have definitely been number one. If oh my sure. God. What I need to try to do is convert that and try to get it on YouTube. Michelle Blair. Michelle Blair is a mother from Michigan and she killed two of her children because allegedly Stephen, which was the boy, molested her younger son and um, what was the girl's name? Bla- uh, Blaze. Uh, let me go back because you know I got the notes. Michelle Blair. Stony. Stony. Yeah. I just. Um, Stony was I the just older. name on the internet. I, I yeah. So she kills Stephen, and she burns Stephen with hot water. She beats him. Mm. Uh, did she cut off his penis? Or did she just burn him on his penis? She just burned him on his penis. Yeah, she burned him on his penis. Basically, she tortured her own flesh and blood. This is her son. Uh, I think he was nine at the time. And she folded him up and she put, she put, she's tried to suffocate him with a a grocery bag. Mm -hmm. And then she folded him up and she put him in the freezer. Stoney said, and the older there was an older sister that the, he wasn't dead. No, nope. she put him in the freezer. He wasn't dead. Nope. Nine months later, she killed Stony because she's like Stony was basically a witness to it, and she colluded with her brother to molest the younger son, the younger brother, but the younger sibling. Um, she also tortured Stony. She was also put in the freezer. Uh, they lived in squalor. And so um, they were getting evicted and the sheriff's department was serving eviction papers and then they, they went in and they could smell something and they opened the freezer and they found two children in the freezer. If that wasn't bad, her antics in court and her okay. confession was crazy as hell. This woman basically said she'd do it again. Mm -hmm. She had no regrets about killing her own kids uh, because they molested the the younger son, whose his name is not listed, neither is the older sister. Now, there is no proof at all that there was any abuse going on. None. None. No kind of... And basically the entire incident stemmed from the younger sibling playing with dolls and he was mimicking like a sexual act with the dolls. And she asked him, where'd you learn that? And he's like, I don't know. And so she keeps asking him and then she kind of throws Steven's name in the mix. She's like, did Steven teach you that? And he's like, yeah. Yeah. And so then she starts torturing Steven, beating him and torturing him. But here's the thing, if y'all have not looked at any of the interviews that she did, I'm quite sure that that little four-year-old boy who was four at the time was scared out of his pants. Yes. And he had to admit something. And that's what kids do. They will lie. Kids lie. Kids are the best liars. They will have chocolate chips on their face and you can ask them, did you eat cookies? And they're like, mm. If it's going to take the heat off of them, they are going to tell anybody. It doesn't matter right. who it is. And if you throw them a name... That's and they will bad. lie about they will lie to just innocently like yeah I didn't do that but just think of your mother being Michelle Blair mm-hmm. I'd lie to get out of you too. something that Michelle Blair asked me and I'm grown this lady let me tell you my mom up until the Michelle Blair episode watched every episode after the Michelle Blair episode, my mom told me I ain't watching no more of that damn show. <laughs> <laughs> she hasn't seen an episode since. 
She has not seen the episode since. That was a that was a hard story. Yeah, it was. It was. I mean, because even even the the even when they asked that the baby again, he did not repeat any of this stuff. He didn't he didn't say any of that. He was like, no, it's pretty much like I don't know what you're talking about because he was safe. Yeah, they lived in squalor. She was on welfare. She was mean as a. Oh, she was mean as a polecat. I mean, she was just mean and evil. So imagine living with her. Um, one of the things that she said that she had been abused and so she had some trauma. So the way that she acts, I don't doubt that she had the trauma that she described. However, like Randy said earlier, lots of people do, you know, have horrible childhoods and they don't do things like that to their children. No, I, I don't know when Michelle was triggered. Um, but yeah, that was. Listen, fall down the rabbit hole. Go to YouTube. Look up interviews with Michelle Blair. Um, I think it's the Daily Daily. I forget which report, which um, newspaper did it. Um, but there's an interview that that is being done. It's a British reporter. Um, Daily Mail. I think is it the Daily Mail that does it. Mm -hmm. uh, British reporter and he's talking to her while she's in prison and it is chilling as hell and of course you, you, once you watch that video you're just going to keep falling down the rabbit hole and you will be right. completely, keep spooked by, completely spooked so if I can I will try to upload that that video um, and we did that on uh, Instagram so I will try to uh, upload that video I mean she was whew, she even got mad at the baby and when the baby daddy he was trying to get custody yes <laughs> Well, she went off on him too. Every time Stone she in court, Stoney's dead. The 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 trial judge was appalled. She was she was absolutely appalled. Um, like, but I mean, all of it. If you watch this, you you would be appalled too. So Michelle Blair <laughs> had to be, you know, one of the one you of the know. Best. I think Michelle may be the worst. Well, definitely the top three of the worst people we didn't deal with. Definitely the top oh, three. I think she is beside. Okay, I think is it is it like a tie between her and the and the uh, uh, high five murders? Yes, I do. Ooh, I don't know. The high five murders was brutal. I'm talking brutal. They involved a gun, a pen, a big pen, uh, and. Oh. Inan products. What yeah. was it? Uh, and, and Drano. It was Drano, a big, and a gun. No, okay. these were her own kids, though. These are her yeah. own kids. Those, those are her own kids. But in, in terms of the actual brutality, um, there were there was torture in both cases. Um, I think we we we're more appalled by Michelle Blair because those were children. Um, and you have to think about her son reaching out for her. Like, that's still his mom, regardless of what she's mm -hmm. doing to him. That's still his Bad. mom. And uh -huh. I'm quite sure he's reaching out to her, trying to reason with her, asking, you know, why are you doing this? What's wrong? What did I do? And she's torturing him like this. So I'm quite sure, and this is speculation, that Stephen went to you know, went to his death pleading with his mom. Not necessarily to, probably just for understanding, because that's what kids want. You know, they want to understand why they're being punished. And I'm quite sure Stephen had no idea. No idea. So, yeah, I think Michelle Blair was the the worst of the stories that we've done this year. Yeah. The worst. The worst. Yeah, to, to, to put your kid in a freezer alive... Yeah, and then nine months later, you do the same thing to the sister. Do the exact same thing. So she knew what was going to happen to her. That's that's a worse torture that's, because that's pretty much it. She she knew exactly what was going to happen to her. Yeah, that's the even worse torture. She's just it's yeah. brutal. Um, let's see. What do you think was the weirdest one that we had? Like just kind of bizarre. Um, let me think. We did do the um, 
the silent twins. Yeah. You know what? That was gonna be my thing, and I was like, "Is they weird though? Really? Yeah, hell yeah, it was weird. I mean, but they communicate. The reason why I don't think it's so weird is because they just had a mental problem. That that they, they had some form of a mental disability of some sort. I think but all it, these it, have that, a disability. I don't necessarily think that the, that the silent twins had a mental disability. I think I think they developed one. I okay. Think. I think because they talked only to each other and they I were see. able to communicate with each other, I think they're when they were ostracized, they were the only black kids in that town going to school. Right. And they were ostracized, so that made that further insulated them with each other. And then their mm -hmm. family, their the mom and dad didn't know how to communicate with it's like they didn't even want to try at some point. They just kind of like, well, let them do that, you yeah. know. Because they only really communicated with the, with their little sister. And everything else was between each other. And then they, you know, sent them off to, they, they fell in, I think the, the straw that broke the camel's back with those twins was the boys. Uh-huh. Because they had been ostracized for so long and then they fell in love and the boys kind of, those two boys ghosted them. And that triggered them because that's when they started robbing thing, robbing stores and setting fires. And that's after that is when they, um, they were gonna go to prison, but they in, they ended up at Broadmoor instead. And they were in Broadmoor and, for eleven years. Hmm. I like that story actually. Yeah. So they were in Broadmoor for eleven. But it years. is weird. But it's probably not. It's the weirdest story we've done, I guess. Mm -hmm. I think about it. All of our it's stories are normally weird. stories weird. They were just. It was a story that didn't involve murder. Um, so, you know, like the other ones that we did, all the other stories involved um, murder, mayhem. This just, this is mm -hmm. back, y'all. We survived the whole show, and now my nose is back. It happens right when we start to bring it on in. Yeah, right, right at the end. <laughs> right at the end. Right at the end. So, yeah. Right, right before the benediction. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, I think that the the Silent Twins, um, you know, the, it was it was it was different. It was the story that was different because it, it didn't involve murder and mayhem. It just involved um, a mystery of why they were like that. And um, in the end, one of the twins did die. They had kind of made a pact with each other that one of them had to die in order for the other one to live because they 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 understood that. They, they would only continue to communicate with each other. They would not be able to live fully if both of them were alive. So, um, yeah, that was a, that was a, that, I think that was a pretty good story. And it actually is uh, a pretty popular story on our YouTube channel as well. Um, you know something else, they tried to make it look like they were like some kind of, like if you, anybody else on YouTube who has done that story, mm -hmm. they try to make it look like they're like, serial killers or they're crazy for people you know or that they're like these horrible horrible girls yeah. that do some, some serious crime and i'm like yeah and if did the story and i read i'm like what there's nothing yeah like if you just read captions uh and and kind of look at the descriptions of the videos um you would think that they actually killed someone and mm -hmm. they didn't they were just two twins that were misunderstood and no one knew why they did right. what they did, why they communicated that way. They were just uh, isolated and they just kept going inside themselves, but you know, only with each other, though. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. essentially they were the same person. Yeah. I think essentially they were the exact same person. There was two of them, but one, like one, uh, one mind, but two bodies. And yeah. I don't think that I think that they knew that that one mind wouldn't be able to sustain to sustain two bodies, um, and have it be a quality of you know quality life for both mm -hmm. of them. Um, there's other stories like that with twins who are a lot like them. Mm -hmm. I mean, but some of those ten, twins did end up killing. These two just you know did not. But yeah. there are a couple other where there were twins who were like that who were so close and just you know basically one person and didn't 
you know, or was around other people, but just didn't. No, no, no one ever stepped out of the twinship to be their own person. So yeah. it's not like their story is is a form one of something. You know, actually, there's this kind of, you know, since they didn't end up killing anybody, it really unique you know. to that type of disorder. Yeah, yeah. So that was a good story. Okay, uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and announce the winner of the contest. So again. The contest that we did, the giveaway that we did, um, no purchase was necessary. This was not a sponsored contest. So this mm -hmm. the contest was actually paid for by Black Coffee and Crime. Um, and we decided to uh, celebrate some businesses. Uh, we buy stuff. Uh, during this pandemic, people have become really, 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 really creative. Uh, started to tap into... Um, you know, their own ideas and say, you know, I might as well do this. So a lot of small businesses have sprouted out of this pandemic. So I guess that is something to celebrate because a lot of people who wouldn't have otherwise realized their dreams and said, I'm going to paint, I'm going to do this, I'm going to make this, we wouldn't have done it. We would have had all the excuses, but a lot of um, new entrepreneurs um, started up one of them now i don't know about ivory test coffee i just discovered ivory test coffee a few weeks ago um on facebook and i bought the coffee got the coffee like in two days drank the coffee and it was awesome coffee y'all uh i mean damn good coffee and so i bought four back um don't no judging <laughs> Uh, four bags, and I decided we're going to gift our one of our subscribers to a bag. So, twelve ounce bag of Frenchie's Blend from Ivory Test Coffee will be coming to a single winner, and also to that winner is a fifty dollar gift card to Nairi Sky. Now, Nairi Sky started off um, as a makeup company, um, started by a mother and her two daughters. Now, she has, Teresa has beautiful daughters. And their makeup game it, is ridiculous, okay? <laughs> and um, so she started off that way, and then she expanded to soap. And then she expanded to beard oil. And then she has uh, waist trainers. Like, this girl is all over the place, and she's doing things. And on top of that, her products are good. Like, so I purchased her soap. Faithfully, I have some... Uh, a delivery right now in the mailbox of her soap. Um, I have my eyes. My you eyes have, are my is that the celestial palette that you have on right now? The simply celestial is that the one? Yeah, I think it's simply celestial powder um, palette, and also lipsticks. Her lipsticks, um, I have two of her matte lipsticks, and trust me, they ain't going nowhere. They don't transfer. You you need Vaseline to take these joints off, okay? So that's how good they are. <laughs> so we decided to gift. A uh, $50 gift card to Nairi Sky. So male or female winner, doesn't matter. You will be able to find something at Nairi Sky. Her soaps are yeah. wonderful. Um, I shower with these soaps every single day. Every day. Um, as a Black woman, you, you know, um, your skin can be sensitive. And of course, we um, any film from soap leaves, you know, leaves us extra ashy or skin dry. None of that. None of that. And I've tried, mm -hmm. as far as body soaps, I've had three different ones. I've had the Milk and Honey Alpha, and I forget the other one. But in any case, and I also have the Yanni soap, and that's for women. You might want to get you some of that, the Yanni Love soap. Um, uh, and you, there's no film on your skin. None whatsoever. It rinses clean. It's soft. That Simply You palette from Nairi Scott. That's the one that Brandy's wearing tonight. So I'm glad you actually wore that. I'm glad you wore that. That was that was like right on point that you wore that. So um, the I color. Well, so, so yes, <laughs> yes. Look at those pigments. Pretty, 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 pretty. little one. Yes, wonderful palette. So, um, so if you are um, waiting for Christmas, haven't bought anything for Christmas, guess what? You can regift any of this if you want to it's fine if you want to regift the coffee you're not a coffee drinker regift the coffee because it's good stuff if you uh have someone in your life that 
you know, likes makeup or just likes to pamper themselves, re-gift the gift card to Nairi Sky. Now, the coffee will come to you by mail whenever it comes to you by mail. <laughs> right. <laughs> it, might, it might actually come FedEx, you know, um, if that's a, a, a faster option, which it probably is at this time. And the gift card will be emailed to you. So the winner will have to email us at info at blackcoffeecrime.com with um, letting us know that you're the winner because we know who you are, um, your address so we can send that coffee out and your email address so we can go ahead and email you the $50 gift card. Now, our winner today, we've already seen that and I will put this, in, I will edit it in and put it in there. Our winner is Ife, what is the name? Because, of course, I should know the name because I watched it. Our winner is Ronnie Ife Bronner. Um, Why Ronnie? We actually did this with little random spinny wheel. We put 125 names in there. You are eligible if you uh, subscribed on YouTube. You're eligible if you followed us on um, Instagram. You were eligible if you followed and or liked us on Facebook. We would rather you follow us on Facebook, but it's fine. Um, I included those names. If for whatever reason you liked, subscribed, and followed, and you didn't, your name was not in there, that was because your account was private and I couldn't see it. Um, so there was 125 eligible winners. Some people have multiple uh, names in there, but our winner for this purpose is Ronnie Ife Bronner. So we would ask that you email us at info at blackcoffee.com so we can go ahead and get your stuff out. So congratulations on the win. Um, we also want to thank you for being a part of this. We want to thank all of our subscribers um, and followers and likes for being a part of this. Um, again, this is one of those pandemic projects um that still lasted through the entire year which is crazy um and we're gonna pick this back up on january 5th so we're skipping a week and we will start the new year january 5th with a new episode uh that episode um we're gonna be talking about move which um was a um a movement move is a movement um, a group of people who lived in Philadelphia who wanted a, a different way of life for themselves. And in 1985, uh, the city of Philadelphia bombed that neighborhood in that compound, killing multiple people and sending the rest of them to prison. Um, along with that, uh, there's a documentary on HBO called 40 Years a Prisoner. Two of the people who were captured and imprisoned are still in prison 40 years later. And their son, who was born in in prison, uh, is the subject of this documentary called 40 Years of Prisoner. So we will review that and then talk about move on January 5th. So um, we do want to thank everyone who has liked, subscribed, looked, even if you look for 30 seconds or 30 minutes of each episode, we appreciate that. Um, we will be making some changes in 2021. Um, we kind of know what we're doing now. Kind of, kind of, kind of. So we're kind of going to make it look like we know what we're doing a little bit more. Um, hopefully we'll be able to get some merchandise out. Um, but if not, we'll just keep sending y'all coffee because that's what we do. Um, so we'll do that. Um, but thank you again for being a part of Black Coffee and Crime for the year 2020. Hopefully we have distracted you from your real life. Uh, and just to let you know that people did have it worse than you do. So, um, yeah, yeah, way worse. And there are creeps in, in things out there. So we, we really appreciate you sharing this with us. So again, thank you. Uh, thank you, Brandy, for always joining us, um, on the show. And thank you, Jackie, for partnering with me to do this thing. And again, thank everybody. So again, we are going to say, what, 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 what am I supposed to say? Thank you. I thought uh, you used to say a joy, a joy, something like that. Um, can't say nothing like more like it. <laughs> Drink. Coffee. Oh my God! I just said it last week. Uh, Come for another cup. Something. <laughs> yes. Be safe. Be blessed. 
and always enjoy that second cup. That's what I say. That's that is. what I say. So that's what we're going to say. So for the rest of this year, um, salutations and be blessed for the rest of this year. Be safe for the rest of this year. And on January 1st, enjoy that second cup. So again, thank you. Um, good night and uh, goodbye 2020. Bye 2020. Thank God. Yes. <laughs>